Hi guys and welcome back to the Mighty Blues. My name is of course Cameron. Everton have confirmed the signing of Ruben Vanagre all the way from Sporting Lisbon or Sporting Club de Portugal uh, for the 2022-2023 season. The Portuguese left-back joins on loan, 23 years old, and of course will accompany uh, Vitaly Mikhailenko and battle for that left-back place for the upcoming Premier League season. Bit of a out-the-blue transfer, I think. Not so much today, because obviously we, there was rumours about this yesterday and I think they started uh, late on, on Monday night. But prior to that, firstly, we didn't think we'd be after the backup left-back as one of our main priorities this summer. Uh, and secondly, Ruben Vanagre's name certainly hadn't been in that conversation. Obviously, former Wolves player, so has worked with Kevin Thelwell in the past at Wolves. And <clears throat> I actually think this is quite a decent sign, to be perfectly honest with you. Now, look. Again, whilst I understand it's not the most exciting transfer on the planet, while I understand that, you know, we're all sitting here badly, you know, in, in need of some sort of positivity, something to get excited about, something to get happy about. And I understand that Ruben van Agre coming in mightn't give, you know, a, a lot of Evertonians that excitement. But I actually think this is quite a smart deal by the club. Um, <clears throat> ultimately, as I said, he's coming in to battle with Vitaly Mikhailenko for that left-back position. If I'm being honest, <clears throat> I think he's probably coming in to be a backup to Vitaly Mikhailenko um, because I don't really think Everton and Frank Lampard would be looking at Vitaly Mikhailenko as a weakness in this Everton team at the moment. Um, so I think Ruben Van Agri will be coming in to be more of a number two. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't bode well for Niles and Kunku's future. Obviously, he is out of contract next season, so it would make sense now <clears throat> for Everton to make a decision on Nas and Kunku, whether that be give him a new deal and send him out on loan or just try and make some money on him and sell him this summer. I'd probably edge towards making some money on him and selling him this summer because if he's not good enough now to be a backup, then he's probably never going to be good enough. We've just seen Tyler and Yango go out on loan, of course, today to Burton Albion and sign a new deal as well. So, <clears throat> you know, we may see something similar for Niles, but given we've just brought in a left-back on loan for the season, pretty much tells me that Frank Lampard uh, and Kevin Thelwell don't deem Niles and Kunku good enough to be a backup to Vitaly Mikhailenko, and that's why we've gone and brought in a relatively experienced defender, still young, 23 years old, obviously, as I said, Premier League experience uh, at Wolves. Uh, he will wear the number 29 shirt for Everton Football Club. He has had his first interview with EvertonFC.com. He said it's a dream come true to join a big club like Everton. The opportunity to work with very good players and a very good coach in Frank Lampard made me excited to sign. The manager is a football legend. Everybody knows him and the opportunity to work with and learn from him and someone like Ashley Cole, one of football's best left-backs, is very big for me. Never mentioned Leighton Baines, which is interesting. Uh, he said Kevin was important too because he knows me very well from when we worked together at Wolves. He explained to me about Everton's proud history and the qualities you need here because it's a very big club and you have to give everything for the supporters. He said, I give everything for my teammates. I always want to win because that is the only way. That's why I've come to Everton to win. They are my characteristics. I'm good with the ball. I like to attack and can also recover the ball. I like to do everything in the game. I remember that Goodison Park is a very difficult stadium to play in for opponents because of the atmosphere. Now it's good to be on the Everton fans' side. I'm looking forward to getting started. Uh, Kevin Thelwell had some words to say. He said, Ruben is a player I know very well, having helped bring him to English football during our time together at Wolverhampton Wanderers. He is a talented young defender with many attributes who has an excellent attitude and works hard at his game. Frank Lampard then said, I'm looking forward to working with Ruben this season. He's a player with Premier League experience who will add quality and depth to our squad. It's important to have competition for places and bringing Ruben in gives us more options. So not a lot said by Frank Lampard, not a lot said by Kevin Thelwell. The usual stuff uh, you would expect to hear from the manager looking forward to working with the player, experience, this, that and the other. And the usual stuff you'd, you'd, you'd sort of expect to hear from Ruben as well. You know, big club. Great atmosphere, you know, a hostile place to come as, as an opponent. Nothing really of, of any surprise there. But as I said, again, it mightn't be the most exciting sign in the world. You know, we might even have been a player that three or four days ago we would have expected to sign. And like I said at the start of the team, it's a little bit <coughs> confusing that we've gone 
you know what, <clears throat> three weeks now, four weeks since uh, James Tarkovsky was announced as an Everton player, and you know we've we've all sat here and, and known the importance of you know bringing in a goal scorer to replace Richarlison, bringing in another midfielder, a number six, you know maybe even another winger, and I think left back will have probably been the last position on the pitch that. And ever, you know, if you've asked an Evertonian two weeks ago, what position do you think is 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 in desperate need of of of, of um, you know, of reinforcement? You know, which which position do you think we need to to bring in the most? I think left back would have probably been last on that list, but maybe this was just an opportunity that presented itself and was too good to turn down for Frank Lampard and Kevin Thelwell. Uh, I believe his wages are something minimal, like eight hundred thousand pounds a year, which is a, a ridiculous amount of money, of course. But in the grand scheme of modern day football, I think it works out at something like seventeen thousand pounds a week, or um, sorry. Yeah, something, some, something like that. Very, 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 very minimal. Um, that was wrong, but very, very minimal. Um, uh, figures to, to to be perfectly honest with you. Um, and you know, again, it might have been put to Kevin Thelwell and Frank Lampard that he was available. He was available on loan, so there's no financial repercussion other than those wages, of course, which again, as I said, aren't, aren't very big. Um. And Everton might have looked at the situation and thought, well, do you know what? He's more experienced than Nazan Kunku. He's had Premier League experience before. He's got experience in Europe. He's at a decent age. We'll bring him in and he can come in and provide some competition for Vitaly Mikhelenko. I don't necessarily think Frank Lampard and Kevin Thelwell have sat down after America and thought, I know what position we need to strengthen in the most. Left back, because that wouldn't make any sense. And whilst it's important to have competition for places and whilst I've got absolutely no problem with having competition for places, I would have liked Everton to have gone out and bought a number six because we haven't got a number six to start with not a, not a, a good enough one anyway um, or another goal scorer because the same applies with that before we start going and bringing in competition for places in other areas in which we've got a, a you know a, a good enough starter but as I said I don't think it was a case of the manager and the director of football looking at it and thinking we desperately need a backup left back I think it was probably more of a case of the opportunity, uh, uh, you know, arising and, and the opportunity presenting itself and Everton thinking, do you know what, we'll take that because, you know, it's it's, it's ultimately it's, it's it's a no-brainer, really. If he doesn't do well, he goes back in the end of the season. I think there's a, a, an option to buy on him uh, at the end of the, the, the season, but it's not a, um, it's not a obligation, uh, <coughs> which obviously works in, in, in Everton's favour. And... It gives Kevin Thelwell a, a decision to make on Niles and Kunku as well. Does he get a new contract and then go out on loan this season? Because let's be honest, he's leaving this summer regardless, whether it's on loan or on to permanent, he will leave this summer because it would be absolutely pointless to keep him here now that we've just brought in a backup to Vitaly Mikhelenko or somebody that's going to give competition to Vitaly Mikhelenko. Um, and that's a decision that's going to have to be made over the next couple of weeks or so regarding him. In terms of Vitaly, I think it's good. I think it gives him some healthy competition. As I said, competition is is healthy in football. Uh, you know, players tend to improve. Players tend to, um, you know, push themselves a little bit more, give that a little bit more when they know they've got somebody who is who plays in the same position who's knocking on the door for their place. Um, and I'm not saying Vitali doesn't give a hundred percent already. I'm not saying he's he's a player that gives you know not enough. But again, if if it's possible for him to give more, we'll see that now because he's got a genuine competition knocking on that door. It also allows Vitali to have a rest every now and then um, because although Nazin Kunku is is very He's a very attractive forward thinking fullback. He's got pace, he can beat a man, he can get in good positions defensively. You know, over the, the few times I've watched him, and, and even recently over in America defensively position wise he, he's still not great whatsoever and in the Premier League he would get exposed massively um, so it'd be nice to have somebody with that experience who is a little bit you know better defensively to be able to step in if, if Vitaly needs a rest or if you know if touch would you know he, he doesn't but if, if an injury occurs um, in an ideal world we probably wouldn't see Ruben Van Agre more than 10 times this this is this coming season in an ideal world but we all know we um we don't need we, we we don't live in an ideal world and Everton never ever ever you know never mind a couple of injuries Everton very rarely have a season where every player doesn't get injured I think the season under Carlo Ancelotti we were the only Premier League team to have every single first team player out injured at some point or another last season we had a ridiculous injury record so <clears throat> I think it's a smart bit of business to be honest with you <clears throat> it's um it's not again. 
you know, it, it, it's not necessarily a position we needed to fill as a necessity. Obviously, there's there's a lot of links at the moment with um, Dwight McNeil of Burnley, the Telegraph reporting that Everton had an advanced talks with Burnley over a deal to bring him to the football club for around £15 million. We're going to talk about that on a separate live stream. Uh, Adjissa Garner Gay being linked with a move back to Everton as well, which would certainly be an interesting one. Um, but I think Ruben is, is, is a decent signing. He comes in, he'll provide some competition, and as I said, I don't really think this is a deal to get too stressed about. <clears throat> I understand why people aren't particularly excited, but I don't think this is really a deal to get too stressed about. As I said, he's had Premier League experience before. His stats last season, 12 appearances for Sporting in the Portuguese League, one assist, no goals, played in the Champions League last season, a couple of appearances, uh, and played in the domestic cup competitions as well, and got one assist in in, in, in four games in those competitions, separate competitions. Um Let's have a little look at his um, <clears throat> at his season at Wolves uh, because I think that would be really, really interesting to have a little look at that uh, because obviously that was his seasons in the Premier League. So during his time at Wolves, uh, only made a couple of Premier League uh, appearances. Um, oh no, sorry, this is this is different seasons. Um, so <clears throat> let's count them up. He made. Um, why isn't the away of why is this separated itself? Why isn't the away of just telling me how many Premier League appearances he made um, altogether, rather than telling me it in different seasons? So he made um, thirteen appearances in the Europa League, eight in the actual Europa League, five in the qualifying stages for Wolves, scoring two goals in those appearances. He made my match is going to be absolutely dreadful here. Um, 35 appearances in the Premier League over the course of three years, two in his last season, 16 prior to that, and 17 in his first. Uh, no goals and no assists during that time. Nine appearances in the Championship uh, with one goal and one assist during there. A couple of FA Cup appearances here and there, only getting an assist and played in the league a couple, a couple of times as well. So in terms of goal contributions, not an awful lot to go by. However, he is a left back. It's not like we've just signed a striker who has scored one goal in thirty odd games in the, in the Premier League. We've signed a left back who is okay, only had one assist. But you know, again, I don't think that's particularly too important given he's going to be a backup this season. Or we we, we can assume he uh, will be a, a backup this season to um, Vitali Mikhalenko. Um, you, what you've got to look at, I suppose, is is he better? than Nas and Kunku. Is he more experienced than Nas and Kunku? Is he, will he provide more confident cover for Vitali than Nas and Kunku would? And, and I know some people will say, well, caveat that, Cam, why are we bringing in a 23-year-old when we've got a young lad there who we should be bedding through and, you know, trying to improve and, <coughs> you know, trying to, to build, to be good competition for, for Vitali Mikhalenko. But for all we know, Frank Lampard and, and Kevin Thelwell might have looked at Nas and Kunku over the last couple of weeks in America and just decided, listen, he's not good enough. You know, he had a season out on loan last season. They might have thought he hasn't improved enough. He hasn't he hasn't gone away and learned enough for us to deem that it would be and it sounds sly, it sounds a little bit, you know, nasty, but worth the time of working with him because they might think he's never gonna get to that level. Um so yeah, as I said, I'm 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 happy with this. Uh, again, a bit, little bit like the Tarkowski deal. Obviously, a bit different to the Tarkowski deal because Tarkowski was coming in to be a starter, um, and uh, according to a lot of Blues, potentially a captain uh, at the football club. So it's a little bit different. But again, I understand that that there's not a lot of excitement. I understand that it's 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 a it's a utility signing. It's it's almost like a yeah decent bit of business, but not not something we're going to get particularly excited over. And I get that people are still saying, well, we need a creator. We need a you know, a number six, we need a goal scorer, and I think that's why when we're being linked with players like Dwight McNeil and Garner Gay, etc., etc., Armando Brogia, there's there's a little bit more uh, talk and excitement around that, but I don't think it can be understated how important uh, Ruben Van Agre could be for Everton next season, if, as, as I said, if Vitaly Mikhalenko does pick up an injury, having somebody that I would deem as, as a solid enough uh, replacement is, is important. Um, and, you know, as I said, if we ask ourselves the question is, is Ruben Vinagre uh, a more, you know, a, a, a sort of more suited replacement to step in for Vitaly Mikhalenko if need be than Nas and Kunku? I would say, yeah, he is because he's more experienced. Uh, he's played, you know, in, in the Premier League before, you know, a fair few times. And I think he's better defensively than Niles is. So, yeah, 
it's competition for places. It's a, a Premier League experienced player who's coming in to, to provide some competition. And ultimately, to I suppose from Ruben's point of view, to try and make a point, to try and make a statement, to try and ultimately um, show you know either Sporting or Everton that he's good enough. Um, and you know ultimately he's good enough to to um, to to want for, for for Everton to want to keep him on in 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 the coming seasons. Um, whether or not we do, of course, it will be determined. But uh, he could very well make his debut on Friday night against Dynamo Kiev. Um, I'm sure we will wait and see if that is the case. Um, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of keen eyes on him come that game as well. Let's get into some of the comments then and see what people are having to say regarding this. Up the F and Sophie says, Liam is right. Wonderlust says, welcome to Everton. Ruben Vinagre is right, my mate. Steven says, let's go and get Garner now. <coughs> I'm not... Listen, I just, again, there's, there's been a couple of things that have happened with Garner over the last six months that... <coughs> have massively put me off him coming back to the club. We'll say that um, without going too deep into it. Do we need a player of Garner's type? Yes. And if Garner was the player he was three years ago when we sold him, absolutely. Is he that same player now? I don't know. He's 33 years old. Will he be able to keep up with the pace of the Premier League? He's done well at PSG. Uh, and I've watched them a couple of times in the Champions League and he's been brilliant, but I've also watched them a couple of times and he's been caught. Um, <clears throat> so... Yeah, and I understand a lot of people will be excited about it. I wouldn't be surprised to see him return to Everton, I'll say that. There's a, there's a couple of ex-Everton players I wouldn't be surprised to see returning by the end of this summer. Um, but what the thing that frustrates me so much with the Ghana situation is we shouldn't be in a position where we're excited for a Disagana Gator potentially return to the football club. Uh, we shouldn't be. It, and, and people can disagree with me all he wants. That's a fact. That's an absolute fact. We should not be in a position where we're excited about a player who we let go at the age of 29, nearly 30, returning to the football club. <coughs> whether or not he was brilliant when he was here or not, <coughs> whether or not he you know, was excellent and we missed him, you know, the fact that we haven't managed to replace him and the fact that we're not sitting here now going, well, we don't need to bring him back because we've got this young lad who we brought in when Garner left, who is 25, 26 now and is absolutely brilliant. It just shows, again, the failures of this football club. And I'm not trying to make this negative and, oh, you're just trying to make it uh, anti Everton, this, that and the other. That's the only way I can see this. If Garner comes back, Again, as I said, there's certain things that have gone on which have put me off him a little bit. Uh, as a footballer, if he can perform like he did you know, when, when he was at Everton previously in those last couple of seasons, then, yeah, he will massively improve us. Of course he will. But why are we looking at a 33-year-old who we sold as a 29-year-old, 30-year-old, and when we sold him, we all said, you know what, let's go out and replace him. And, OK, you could say, well, we brought in Gabamon and he's had ridiculous injury issues and that's not his fault and that's not the club's fault and that's fine. But the reality is we should have replaced Gabamon two years ago. After one season of Gabamon having two of the worst injuries you can get as a footballer, we should have really said, well, well, we'll, we'll see how he does when he comes back. But for now, we're basically going to act like he's not here and we're going to go and replace him with somebody else. I just, <clears throat> again, I just think it's it just shows how badly run a, as a football club we are. It really, really just shows how badly run as a football club we are. Um, but But, yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's just my take on it. You might have a different take. Um, Wanderlust says, this guy's the definition of a utility signing and those are necessary to Everton. If we just start to get sexy signings, we'd be handicapping ourselves even further than we already are. But yes, next is a midfielder. Have they said how much his buy option is? No, I don't think. Um, I like BBW says, is Garner coming home, Cam? <clears throat> I don't know. I know as much as you all do about the situation. So, yeah. Um, Wunderler says, loving the winning attitude shown in that statement, saying, I came to Everton to win is hard, warm, and considering that's going to be uh, a capella to cool off. We need more of that, I believe. Yeah, uh, again, I, I don't tend to look too much into the um, the statements and stuff when any player signs, because it's, it's you know, they're all media trained to the hilt and... They all know what to say, ultimately. He's not going to come out and say, yeah, I've come here for a relegation scrap because I thought it looked all right last season. Every player is going to come in and say, we're a big club, we've got ambition, it's a project, we've got a new stadium, the manager's great, he want, they want to win. So I don't look too much into it. But but again, that's not his fault. He said all of the right things. I just think 
in football, you know, it's it, it's very. But you, very rarely will a player or a manager say the wrong thing when signing for a football club. And, you know, that doesn't mean that every player or manager goes on to be a success, does it? Or actually believes in what they're saying. Uh, case in point, Fabian Delph. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> where are we? Let's go, says Amazing. <clears throat> Lone Wolf says, cheer squid, not a bad price for a modern day transfer fee if he's a backup. A up ball says, Philip, what's happening? Um, Pickford's not going to Leicester, mate. Uh, Garner returning home says, Jack. Um, that was a very fast signing compared to normal, but I hope we slow down massively to not have McNeil in the team, says Ollie. And Sam says, can't lie, Cam, the McNeil signing terrifies me. No pace, 38 games, no goals, one assist last season. You know he's the Richardson replacement, too. I hate this club at the moment. Yeah, listen, <clears throat> his, um, his season wasn't great last season, Dwight McNeil's. Um, and <clears throat> that, of course, has to be taken into consideration. We are going to do a separate live stream talking about some more transfer rumours because this isn't a rumour. Obviously, this is a confirmed sign. And um, we'll talk a little bit more about Dwight McNeil in that video as well as um, Adjusta Garner Gay and a couple of other players we've been linked with. 15 million quid. Still quite relatively young. I actually think Dwight McNeil would score 10 goals for Everton next season. And you might think I'm mad and, and this might come back to bite me on the arse. We might sign him and he mightn't. But I remember Richarlison being absolutely woeful for Watford in the final six months of the season before we signed him. And everybody saying, oh, we've spent £50 million on a player who had a decent two, three months. And look at what we got out of him for, for four years. I think Dwight McNeil is a good player with talent. I wouldn't be paying more than £15 million for him, don't get me wrong. And I wouldn't be massively confident if he was the Richarlison replacement, which he probably likely would be. But I also don't think he's as much of a disaster as some people are making out. And if he does come to Everton, I'll get behind him like I will with any player. Again, I could be massively wrong there. But it, it, I suppose it's how Frank Lampard utilises him and uses him. The reality of the situation is he's not got enough pace to be a winger. So he can't be played on the wing. Because we'll have the same thing as we've currently got with Deli Ali, where he's not quick enough to play that position and therefore he gets exposed. So it's an interesting one because I don't know quite where he fits in at Everton uh, and, and the way Frank wants to play. But as I said, we'll cover that on another video. Anyway, look, we are going to finish it there then. If you have enjoyed this one, please do hit that like button. It does only take a second. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Let us know your thoughts on Ruben Vanagre signing for Everton. Are you happy? You're not that bothered. Do you just want Everton to sign a Richardson replacement? Let me know down below. Massive, massive thank you for everybody for watching. Really do appreciate it. Uh, and if you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Leave your comments down below as well. Peter says, uh, 10 goals, Cam, go and have a lie down. And Lee says, that's it, to delete the channel, unfollow. Why? Because I've got an opinion. Because I've got an opinion. I didn't say 10 Premier League goals. I said 10 goals. Reality is, if he's not going to score 10 goals, then... We've wasted another 15 million, haven't we? Because we've got nobody else that's going to do it. So, listen, I remember sitting here and talking about Richarlison signing and saying that he'd, he'd, be, he'd do very well for Everton and people saying, oh, he'd be, he'd be awful, he'd be awful. And look at where we are four years later. So, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. I, I think Dwight McNeil would score more than Ross Barkley would. I think Dwight McNeil would score more than Jesse Lingard would. I think Dwight McNeil would... Put it this way, he'll score more than any of our current midfielders. And that and I'm not saying that's necessarily good enough, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, big big thank you all for watching. If you have enjoyed this one, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new as well. And we'll see you soon on the Mighty Blues. <laughs>